Israel's, Israel's prime minister, a uh, parliament rather, approves key parts of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's judicial overhaul. The new rules limit the Supreme Court's ability to challenge parliamentary decisions, and it also changes the way judges are selected. Netanyahu says this was needed to curb the power of unelected judges. Many have a need, seen the same need here in America for our judiciary, noting how unelected left-wing judicial appointees here have adopted an unconstitutional practice of legislating from the bench, eroding the constitutional separation of powers. For more on this, let's bring in former Assistant Foreign Policy Advisor to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Senior Columnist for Newsweek in Israel Hayom, Caroline Glick. Welcome to you, Caroline. Nice to, nice to see you. The Biden administration said Netanyahu rushed into this and didn't listen to the will of the people, but really, the far left here just doesn't really like reining in unelected left-wing judges who were legislating from the bench. My understanding is this reform was needed to stop unelected officials from overriding the will of the people. What's your take? I think you're absolutely right. Actually, the, the reform of the judicial selection process uh, is still uh, waiting to be undertaken in the next session of the Knesset, which will happen in the fall. Uh, but uh, what was passed yesterday was really just a limited uh, measure that uh, limits uh, the Supreme Court's uh, power to overturn legal decisions by government ministers, by the government, and by the prime minister uh, on the basis of uh, an invented power that they concocted for themselves in the 1990s called the reasonableness doctrine, which says that if a judge thinks that a decision by the prime minister is unreasonable, he gets to overturn it. So that was what was uh, was changed yesterday in law, that they're no longer able to use that clause to overturn government decisions or the prime minister's decisions or decisions by government ministers. And, you know, this followed six months where the government and the Knesset, the coalition, was trying to negotiate some sort of a compromise with the opposition while mm -hmm. we've had rioters in the streets of Israel along the lines of the Black Lives Matter protests in the United States. Uh, threatening civil war if any limits were placed on the court's power. So it's really important that it happened, not because of what the wow. law actually has done or changed, but because this means that in the future, they're not going to be able to think that they can negotiate with a gun pointed and get the head of the government, that they're going to be able to light the country on fire. Makes the, the reform makes sense to me. I wanted to talk to you about a piece, and I've only got about a minute and a half left, a piece that you wrote. You note that Israel is leery over the left, uh, over the left wing in this country, and they're pushed to to let Iran get a nuclear weapon. How troubled are you about the anti-Israeli bent of this White House? Really, an extension of the Obama White House, if you think about it. And what does it mean for Israel's future if Iran becomes a nuclear power? Um, so I think that what's happening with this government, with the with the with the Biden administration, is very disturbing because their central Middle East policy really is to expand Iran's uh, power as a regional hegemon. Um, you know, they're 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 not enforcing the uh, oil sanctions on Iran. Iranian oil exports have risen from something like 20, 250,000 barrels a day under Trump to 1.6 barrel million barrels a day now. So they're not enforcing U.S. economic sanctions against Iran, and Iran is uh, using all of the money. Iran itself is bankrupt. They're using all of the money to fund their proxy wars against Israel and their nuclear weapons program, which continues to escalate. So this is very disturbing. Caroline Glick, thank you very much. Appreciate the visit and the information.